Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna explain how to diagnose PW017 crankshaft camshaft correlation fault code. Uh, very quickly on this engine, I'm gonna explain what this code is about. Then we start testing every component one by one. So basically when you install the timing chain after removing the camshaft, crankshaft, or even after replacing the timing chain itself, you have to adjust the timing properly between the camshafts and crankshaft. That adjustment is something mechanical between the crankshaft and camshaft that you need to do every time that you want to install the chain back on. But what happens on some engines like this one, in addition to the mechanical timing adjustment that you do at the very beginning, we have another mechanism that we call it variable valve timing. So when we have this mechanism, when engine is running, in addition to what you adjusted on the timing system at the very beginning, ECM can change the valve timings accordingly to increase the engine output torque based on different engine driving conditions. So on some early models, we used to have only one variable valve timing uh, or what many companies call it VVT. Basically, if we have one VVT mechanism, it's going to be on the intake valve. But some engines like this one, this engine is a dual VVT engine. So it does have one VVT for intake and one VVT for exhaust uh, camshaft. But how this system works? This system works basically by engine oil. For each VVT, there is a VVT solenoid valve, which is this one. VVT solenoid valve provides the engine oil for VVT mechanism itself. So anytime that ECM wants to activate or change the valve timing, it's going to activate this solenoid valve. And right here we have some oil passages. Uh, by activating this one, engine oil can get into the VVT mechanism. And inside the VVT mechanism, we have two chambers. One chamber for advance, the other chamber for retard. So basically when ECM wants to advance the valve timing, it's gonna adjust the VVT solenoid to provide the oil uh, on advanced chambers. So the camshaft is gonna rotate uh, in direction of engine rotation to advance the valves. And when ECM wants to retard the valve timing, it's gonna adjust the VVT solenoid to provide the oil to the retard chambers. So it means the uh, camshaft is gonna rotate in the opposite direction. On this VVT, we have the exterior housing, which is connected to the timing chain, but camshaft itself is connected internally to the VVT. As a result, if we have two VVTs, we should have two VVT solenoid valve as well. One VVT solenoid valve for uh, each VVT mechanism. And ECM keeps monitoring the VVT operation by monitoring the camshaft position. As you see, this is the intake camshaft, exhaust camshaft for each one. I do have one cam sensor. So this is the tone wheel and this is the camshaft sensor and the other one for the exhaust camshaft. So generally, if you have two VVTs, you should have uh, two camshaft sensor as well one for the intake and the other one for the exhaust so basically when this fault happens it could be anything affecting the timing system okay so first of all as you know the vvt and vvt solenoid valve they work with engine oil so if you haven't replaced the engine oil for the long time you have to replace the engine oil because over the time oil sludge is going to get around the vvt solenoid and it's going to get into the VVT mechanism itself and it's going to make some problem for their operation. If you have this code, as soon as you see the code, just check the engine oil. If engine oil hasn't been replaced for a long time. You need to replace the engine oil. That's, that's very important. But if there is nothing wrong with the engine oil or if you have replaced the engine oil and you still have the problem, you may need to start diagnosing on uh, VVT solenoid and step by step you're going to go for the VVT and timing chain so we're not going to go for the timing chain at the very first place because the problem is mostly common on on the VVT solenoid of course if you have recently replaced the timing chain and right after replacing the timing chain you have this code on your scan tool uh, it could be from the timing chain adjustment but if you haven't touched the timing chain recently uh, you might need to start from the easiest ones. So in this video, I'm gonna explain completely how to diagnose the uh, VVT solenoid valve. We have a couple of different steps for inspecting and diagnosing the VVT solenoid valve. And for the VVT itself, 
uh, let's see how we can diagnose and fix the car because this fault code is referring to the exhaust side we need to focus on the exhaust VVT solenoid and exhaust VVT itself here is my exhaust VVT solenoid valve so what you need to do you need to inspect the connector first make sure connector it's seated properly and it's not loose take the connector out inside the connector you have two wires the thicker one is the power supply which is coming from the fuse box it carries battery voltage the other one is the control line connected to engine control module so basically as soon as you turn the ignition switch on you should have battery supply right here so you can grab the multimeter set it on the voltage insert the red prop right here and around you should have the battery voltage exactly what i'm getting right now if you are not getting the battery voltage you need to chase this wiring back maybe it's shorted or you got open circuit the other wire on vvt solenoid valve is the control line the blue one it goes all the way from here to engine control module so basically if there is any open circuit or short circuit on control line is going to affect the vvt operation so you're going to need to inspect it you can check the continuity between this wire and the other end on ECM side to make sure the control line is okay and there is no problem on it you can inspect the internal resistance of VVT solenoid as well by selecting the resistance and measuring the resistance across two pins on VVT solenoid valve so as you see I'm getting seven points 7.7 .7, which is completely okay this measurement confirms that the internal winding of solenoid valve is okay so of course it doesn't confirm that the VVT solenoid is okay completely because there could be some mechanical problem or the oil sludge around the valve so I'm going to need to remove it but if this measurement is something really high or really low it confirms that the solenoid valve is faulty and you can just order the valve straight away to confirm the VBT solenoid mechanical operation, disconnect the connector and apply battery positive and negative on the valve, which is going to cause engine hesitation. So after applying the battery positive and negative, engine must hesitate or stop. This confirms that VBT solenoid valve is operating properly. Let's go for the next step to remove the valve and see how it can test it. So here is the exhaust VBT. I'm showing you how to remove and inspect it on this engine. It's going to be much easier for you guys to see how it works. But basically the procedure is the same on engine as well. All right. All right. Let's remove it very carefully. Okay. This is my exhaust VVT solenoid. So basically, as you see, still I have some fire materials on the VVT but generally when you haven't replaced the engine oil for a long time you will have so much engine oil sludge around the VVT which is going to make some problem for VVT operation so you got to be careful uh, if you haven't replaced the engine oil replace it you might need to remove the VVT solenoid to clean it as well right after replacement if engine oil was too old as I said earlier, you can test the internal resistance on the engine, uh, but I have removed it already. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So using the multimeter, select the resistance and you're going to need to measure the resistance across these two pins. So as you see, the value is more than seven. As I told you, this value is normally on many engines I've tested. Uh, it's been normally between 7 to 14 ohms. You're going to need to check the workshop manual if the value is something different just to make sure if it is within the spec or not. If you have tested the internal resistance, you're going to need to make sure if the VVT solenoid mechanical part works properly as well or not because the resistance inspection is actually for the electronic part. You're going to need to check the spool valve inside the VVT solenoid as well. You can provide battery positive and negative right here but just to do it safer, I'm using this one, 9 volt battery. So these two clamps will be provided just right here.
and you're gonna need to just turn this one on when you keep turning on and off on and off you need to make sure that you hear clicking sound uh, from the VVT solenoid so basically using this one you can test the VVT solenoid operation the mechanical part as well if you see it's not clicking it's not working it means the spool valve inside is already stuck it doesn't move at all so uh, that's why you have this fault code because it's not uh, moving anyway and it doesn't let the oil to go through the uh, VVT itself so if you have the scan tool I'm gonna show you how to test the VVT solenoid operation by the scan tool so I have already connected my scan tool to OBD2 connector as you see I'm using launch scan tool today let's turn on the scan tool and see what we can do My ignition switch is on so I need to select the car first as you see it's a Toyota all right on the system list for this one I'm just gonna select engine Uh, you have a couple of options here for reading the code, erasing the code, read freeze frame, uh, reading the live data, actuation test, and a special function. So I'm going to need the actuation test. So go for the actuation test. So on actuation test, if I scroll down, I have control the VVT system right here. I have some description. So this system is going to force the VVT to operate uh, by actuating the VVT solenoid valve. So if that happens, I will have the rough idle or engine may stall. If you have the rough idle or engine stops, it means the VVT is functioning properly. But if you perform the test and nothing happens, it means there is something wrong on, on that VVT. Ignition must be on, engine must be running, and uh, shift lever must be on park position. Monitoring data, yes. So for monitoring data, I can select engine speed. And if you go all the way down, you can select the duty on VVT exhaust and intake. And right here, you see the engine RPM control of the VVT is off. We are trying to make it on. So as, as soon as you press the on button, you, you will feel the engine goes rough or engine will stall. Okay. If any of these two happens, it means the VVT is functioning properly. If it doesn't happen, it means the VVT is not functioning. That could be from the VVT solenoid or VVT itself that I explained uh, in the video how to test them. Let's try it. Let's press on and see what's going to happen. So as you see, engine is running very rough. If I turn it off, engine goes back to normal so this means the vvt is functioning uh, just fine and there is nothing wrong with that for this fault code you might need to check the crankshaft position sensor as well because basically this code is for uh, crankshaft and camshaft correlation but basically if the crankshaft sensor is faulty you may have some other problems like too long cranking before starting or sometimes no starting at all but if you have checked the timing system you still have the problem you might need to check the uh, crankshaft sensor as well in this engine crankshaft position sensor is just located here right here at the front side of the engine some engines they have this, this sensor on the rear side so check the connector properly make sure wires behind the connector are okay the connector itself is not loose is not broken and for the sensor itself we're gonna need to measure the resistance of the sensor to make sure it's okay and i'm gonna show you how to do it all right this is my crankshaft position sensor let's see how we can test it for testing the crankshaft sensor you can use the multimeter adjust it on resistance and you can measure the resistance across these two pins
So as you see, on this sensor, I'm getting 0 0.289 kilo ohms, which is okay on this sensor. You might need to inspect the camshaft position sensor as well. Same story, you're gonna need to check the connector. If you have the fault code for, for the intake camshaft, you're gonna need to check the camshaft sensor only on the intake side. If you have the fault code for exhaust camshaft, you're gonna need to check the fault code only for the exhaust side, okay? You don't, you don't need to replace both camshaft sensors or inspect both camshaft sensors. So you need to check the connector, make sure the connector is seated properly, there is no dirt, no contamination. This gap between the sensor and the tone wheel is really important. If it is too close or too away from the tone wheel, sensor is not gonna pick up the reading. Depends on the type of camshaft sensor, you might be able to inspect the internal resistance as well. So for that, you need to check the workshop manual, see what is the value for internal resistance of the sensor, just like what I did on crankshaft sensor. If you have the value from the workshop manual for inspecting the internal resistance of the camshaft sensor, you can do the same thing. If the, if the value is not correct, you're gonna need to replace the cam sensor accordingly. If you have already checked the VVT solenoid valve and there was no problem on it, you might need to remove the camshaft itself and test the VVT. So basically you can remove the camshaft and use the compressed air on the proper side of the camshaft and see if VVT rotates. If inside the VVT itself, there is a locking pin. If that locking pin is not getting released, obviously VVT is not gonna work as well. If you apply the compressed air and it's still VVT doesn't rotate, you have to replace the VVT mechanism itself. If you have checked the solenoid, it was okay, and the VVT was okay, you might need to redo the timing adjustment because the problem could be from your timing adjustment initially, or you might need to change the timing chain or timing belt.